rely solely on the Ogallala Aquifer for our water resource. And we have areas of the aquifer that are declining faster than they can recharge. So if it goes extinct, so do we. And so we're not kicking the can down the road like it has been for years. We've got to address this and we have to address it now. Here in the High Plains, irrigated land makes up about a quarter of the land, but produces about half of the economic value in western Kansas. So, you know, farming in itself is a very community, very close-knit relationship grip environment. So everybody knew that something was going to happen. I mean, it was inevitable. The aquifer was declining, we had to do something different. Our town is agricultural based, so if we didn't collectively decide to do this to maintain what we have here, our town over time would have slowly dried up. Well, for a long time, the Board of Directors looked at mandatory water restrictions. Then public hearings were held and there was a lot of a lot of angry folks that, that didn't want to be a part of it. So everybody's big question at the end of the day was what economic hurt is this going to put on our community? We're, we're messing with their livelihoods. That's what puts bread on the table. I get it. My family farms as well. We, we have irrigation. We have cattle. I see what it means to my in-laws and to my husband and to his siblings. I'm personally a fifth generation farmer in Sheridan County. I've got two daughters and one son, so they could potentially be a sixth generation if they want to. I mean, it's, it's a family operation. With that being said, I have to proactively think ahead 20, 30, 40 years with what we're doing trying to conserve water so that they have the same opportunities that I had. As scientists, our objective is to see what can we do that can help conserve and extend the life of the aquifer. And what can we do that can help sustain the economy of rural communities that depend on water extracted from this aquifer? At the end of the day, I've had great success working with PhDs, scientists, research professionals in the industry to improve my operation. To me, that is just beyond belief. At the end of the five years, they actually had saved 39%. And actually, because of us being better managers, we actually made more money inside the Lima under the water restriction than we did outside the Lima. We knew we had to conserve moisture because now we can't pump as much water. So we went to a lot more no-till, conservation tillage practices. One of the things they've done is put in some soil moisture sensors. And when they use these sensors to help adjust when they apply the irrigation, they can find out that maybe we can hold off for a couple more days. You know, we're extending the life of the aquifer with the more water that, that we can conserve and extend the future and viability of the economics in Northwest Kansas. You know, if technology is going to help you do that, great, you know, but if it takes different management practices, you know, to, to achieve that, that's cool too. So, yeah. <laughs> Climate change is a big deal, you know, it's, it's getting hotter, it's getting drier, it's, our rainfalls are getting more sporadic, but I have the hope that we can, with proper management, energy, you know, determination, American farmers is extremely determined to do what he does, we can meet the bull by the horns, take it, meet it, and adapt and continue to do what we do.